question from our uh, audience um, uh, regarding this. I have completed five years of medical course on state uh, medical faculty in Bangladesh, four years academic and one year of inter internship. Would you please tell me which health workers visa is applicable for me? Well, you sound like a medical practitioner, a general practitioner. You're going to need to have your uh, qualifications and your experience mm. assessed by uh, the relevant medical board in Australia. Um, because these boards are run by professional associations, uh, they're very protective of the standard of healthcare. So, for example, if you had a qualification from an English or an Irish hospital mm. uh, and you are qualified as a doctor in the UK, that would lead relatively easily uh, through a process which would see your qualifications recognised uh, in Australia. Sir, but he uh, doesn't have any kind of experience. No, I, 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 under, I understand that. So absent experience, what I would recommend is that you mm. would consider coming exactly. on shore and then studying uh, a specialisation and then getting your experience onshore, your clinical training done. So the candidate that you referred to had 12 months post-qualification experience. The question is, are those qualifications going to be recognised and is that clinical experience going to be recognised? If it's not going to be recognised, then you're going to have uh, great difficulty. But one thing I have noticed um, from time to time when my mother goes to hospital, a lot of the nursing staff are from Bangladesh, Nepal, wow. uh, from the Philippines. So really there's mm -hmm. a big demand for people uh, with nursing qualifications and experience in Australia. It is a very good category to be in and there are specialist uh, migration agents, some of them are lawyers, who specialise in this particular area and they recruit people. Thank you. Uh, so let's um, come to the point of uh, partner visa. Partner visas are, in my view, hmm. very, very straightforward but often mishandled by applicants. You can't afford to pay a huge filing fee now in excess of $8,500 and then have your application fail. Oh. If you've got if you've got a genuine ongoing relationship mm -hmm. and you've got a very clear narrative about the circumstances of your meeting, how and when you meet, how the relationship developed, et cetera, et cetera, and you've got evidence in support of the marriage or a de facto relationship and uh, your dealings with the wider community, um, if you've got all of that information, and you prepare and file an application yourself, mm -hmm. the biggest mistake that people make is that after lodging the application, they don't do anything with it. What they do is they let it sit in the system until the case officer gets onto it. Because the processing times are so slow at the moment, that might take over two years. What you need to do, and this is very, very good advice, is that you need to refresh the application every six months. So you put on additional evidence of cohabitation or your communication with your partner or the fact that your partner is sending money for your support or that you've got children in common. All of that interaction is then refreshed on a six monthly basis so that when the case officer eventually opens the case, they've got a real time snapshot of the relationship, not only from the date the relationship is claimed, but also thereafter that the relationship is genuine and continuing. That's the secret to a successful application. And there's a regulation specifically called Regulation 1.15 capital A bracket 3, mm. which sets out what I describe as a statutory shopping list of what you need in order to support your application. Once you got declined uh, from that process, uh, what kind of steps uh, you should uh, take for that? Okay, so if your application is refused, because you have a sponsor, mm. the sponsor makes an application on your behalf for a review of that decision at what's called the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. 
The Administrative Appeals Tribunal, you pay them a filing fee, $3,533, I think it is. You lodge your application and the, the Administrative Appeals Tribunal will take about 721 days to get to your case, which is why it's always better to lodge an application onshore while you are onshore so that you're not troubled by the delay. Because the fact of a couple being separated for two, in some cases, three years, puts the relationship under a lot of pressure.